or to come in and teach the, the five or six students, some, I think sometimes it's up to seven students, that are the teacher's kids in that school. And it's really interesting. I just have a class there. I don't have the whole school like I do at the other two schools. But I'm believing that that one class is going to, you know, God's going to open, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna, God's going to open the whole school. I really believe. The principal at that school, I, I haven't personally talked to her very much. I, I just been coming and going. But every time she walks past the window, she's walking this way on the way by and this way as she finishes. You know, she's wanting the, the full window pane. She's going to use it, right? She's going to see what's going on when she passes by. So it seems like God's drawing her and moving her heart in such a way that maybe in the future we can, once we get the curriculum done, and once we have more labors to help us to do these things, that God is just going to open up more schools. We believe that. And we want you to pray that with us. I want to leave you with two prayer requests uh, uh, before I mention just a few last things. One of those is that more schools would open. And the second one is for labors to come. What are my two requests? Schools. Exactly. Praise God. I like leaving people with just two or three because then you can remember. I don't know, 25, you know. <laughs> Praise God. But there are, I just want to uh, read off here a few things that we could do if we had more labors. What, what could more uh, be done? There's other opportunities. Other There's churches. We, we work with about six, seven, or eight churches. I can't remember the number off the top of my head. Uh, in different various capacities with youth, uh, youth classes, or, or youth uh, Bible studies, or um, there's even one place that Emily actually opened up to her, it didn't open to us, but it opened up to her to teach a missionary, because uh, it was during the time where we were leaving, uh, a missionary training class for some of the adults in this one church. They're hardcore missions. I mean, they go and go and go and go. They're, they're in all these different countries, and a lot of their, their people are, are uh, very active in missions. And so she has that opportunity. And, and that's what I like about when people come to help us, because they have people that they can connect with that we can't necessarily connect with. There's people, there's a demographic there that they can reach and a people that they can they reach, so especially like the, you know, the young single ladies or something. You know, my wife is going to identify more maybe with the young married ladies or, or the, the older ones. And, and I'm not going to, you know, especially. But she can because she's a young single lady. So, so she's reaching people that I could never reach. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? People are hearing that wouldn't normally hear and receiving that wouldn't normally receive because God is using uh, someone different there. So we need that uh, to happen. But there's other things. There's a youth prison in the area that we could uh, go in there and teach classes at a, a young women's uh, prison facility. There are area churches uh, to go and to preach at, to teach at, to, to start youth classes in these churches. There's other preschools, other elementary schools to approach and to offer uh, to have these classes. There's youth camps and youth retreats. There's a lot to do, isn't there? Praise the Lord. I mean, we, we see that everywhere, don't we? In every church, you talk to different pastors just saying, hey, even here in the U.S., we need some laborers. We need some, some workers, people to get involved. Why? Because Jesus said it, didn't he? The harvest is plenteous. The labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest field. So that's why we need to pray. Because there's a lot to do and, and only a short time and only a few doing it. Praise God. So I pray God will challenge your heart tonight that you will be encouraged in what you already are doing and maybe ask God to expand you a little bit and enlarge you a little bit, not here, but enlarge you in spiritually and, and your influence and you're able to reach other people and you're able to do more and have a greater and deeper impact for God. Isn't, isn't that what you'd like to do tonight? Amen. Would you like to do something great for God? I believe he can use you no matter who you are. Uh, I'm not the most talented or, or, or I might be the good, best looking. No, I'm kidding. I'm not the best looking or the best talented or, or or uh, have great uh, abilities or anything, but God is using me simply because I'm willing to do it. That's all God needs is, is a willing heart. Praise the Lord. So all these things can be done if we would just pray that schools would open and that laborers would come to help. Praise the Lord. Is there any questions? Any Anything I didn't already mention? And someone can turn the lights on if they would. Any question, any, anything I didn't cover that you're curious about, the, what they eat there, what the travel's like, um, something spiritual, something not, something political, <coughs> any of the above? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Here in the United States, uh, so many young people are dealing with substance abuse and things like that. And 
it's not as much of an issue uh, because, and it, it goes to you know show what our parents always said, you know, if you keep people busy, they don't get into trouble so much, and that's that's the situation in Taiwan. They're very very busy. They go to school a lot of times, uh, anywhere from eight to twelve hours a day. Uh, it's like a you know full time job. School is. And so they're very, very busy, so it's hard for them to get into trouble. And that's not to say that they don't or that there isn't substance abuse, but it's not as profound. What is very profound is, is uh, teen suicide because of the pressure that they put on their, their children to succeed and to do well. And, you know, they're in school all that time, and you didn't get good grades. And, and they actually post in the classes, they post the grades. I don't know if you ever heard of that. They post the grades on the wall, all the teachers do, all the students' names, top to bottom, who was dead first and who is dead last. So that's a lot of pressure on the, on the teens and on the youth, especially if you want to do well and you don't, and your parents, you know, they don't, you know, you know they don't, they're not forgiving in that, in that uh, area, in that way. So any other questions? That's a good question. Do you have to have a translator for every place you go? I usually do. Uh, I don't have to. I've done done it before without. But it's really hard, especially even if my Chinese is good, to switch back and forth, like Chinese English, Chinese English, and, and try to to say that. So I usually do. Most of the places, the, in the picture, the different places, I have an English teacher. Whoever's the English teacher at the school will be my translator. Sometimes I take a translator with me. There's a young lady that uh, she grew up with us, and and I, me and her brother are really good friends, and so. She has translated for us for years and gotten very, very good. So we like to take her, you know, when we go out to the different places. Uh, but sometimes a brother or sister in one of the churches whose English is good, they will translate for us as well. Good questions. Any other questions? All right. Well, if you have any questions after your service, uh, you can always stop by our table back there. And uh, ask us, we enjoy talking about Taiwan, we like, we like the place. It's, it's a good thing to do when you live here. Praise the Lord. What, what kind of food do they add over there? What kind of food? Yeah. Well, what they like to eat a lot is uh, fried rice, or just rice in general, they usually have with every meal. But fried rice and fried noodles, uh, they eat a lot of pork as opposed to beef. Uh, some because of, you know, they, they just respect the cow, the ox that they, you know, that their grandfathers for years used to plow the fields. Some just because it's cheaper to buy pork. Uh, seafood's readily available there. Uh, shrimp, you know, uh, squid, octopus. Um, uh, my, my son, his favorite foods, he likes rice, seaweed, and uh, fried radish. It's like fried white radish or something. <laughs> he keeps asking for it here in the States. We're like, you're not going to get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, we have some of that after certain. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was at a church and I was joking about that. We were at a fellowship meeting up in New York. I was like, we're going to have spaghetti after service. But I was like, well, we, you know, since you're asking about food, we have uh, seaweed and rice and white radish. <laughs> after service, you should have seen the, the faces. <laughs> they thought it was like they thought it was like fasting, you know. The, to them, it'd be the same thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Any other questions? These are really good. I like to uh, sometimes open for questions because then people can ask them collectively, and I don't answer the same question twelve times. <laughs> Praise God. Any other questions? A lot of miracles. Um, not not as greatly as like you sometimes hear about it in. in what would you say, less, um, less modernized countries. A lot of times, uh, and Taiwan's uh, health system is really, really good in, in as far as um, their, um, we have their health insurance there, and it's very, very, very cheap, and, but it's, it's pretty well. So a lot of times in countries, you know, even like the U.S. sometimes, uh, countries that are more modernized, we tend to, to depend upon that and less on God, so you don't see sometimes those miracles. Uh, take place. So we know we don't see a whole lot of, of great miracles that we think of. And when we consider miracles, you know, sometimes we need to consider the little stuff as well. Like, you know, our son and these beautiful, beautiful daughters here, things along that line. But, uh, you know, not the great uh, you know, miracles of, of past years that we saw in tent revivals and things like that. Good question. Any other questions? <laughs> Do we have many that get filled with the Holy Ghost? In the church that we were working with years ago, yes, in a lot of the churches, yes. Uh, the church that we were working with years ago, they didn't believe. 
in the Holy Spirit and the baptism of speaking in tongues. And uh, we worked with them for, for three years, and finally we got to see that we were we were praying and praying and praying. And I think about uh, after we worked with them, I think for a year, uh, they finally the pastors like got filled with the Holy Ghost. At first, they were against it, completely against it, and then they got filled with the Holy Spirit, and they couldn't deny it anymore. So <laughs> praise God! And then there, some of their youth started getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, yes, most of the churches that we work with just naturally, uh, people are, are getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. All right, any other questions? Do they have also come out in sound and somebody interpret? I'm sorry. Do they have magic in sound and somebody interpret? Yes, yes, yes. That goes along with the receiving the Holy Ghost and, and you know when he's in the service, then things start to happen along those lines. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, with uh, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Refugees coming from different countries, and how is how many these people are they open to that, or do they or they do they want to kind of close their borders down to that and not let other people's people like that come in? You know what? I really don't know. And Taiwan is an island, so it's it's right. you know um, it's not like they have to worry about people swimming over. <laughs> so um, you know that's not really something that I I, I hear too much, and, and I don't think it's much of a discussion. They're they Taiwan's pretty open. Um, and, and just for the fact that we're there, and, and you know, people can come, you know, if they go through the legal uh, things, but they don't have to worry too much about people sneaking in. Uh, so I don't think it's so much. Of, it's kind of an issue, I think. Um, but I really haven't heard a lot of a lot of talk. We talked with you know some of the churches, pastors, and things. We've talked about us that are Americans, you know, on the American side of it. But Taiwanese, I haven't heard them mention much about that. It's a very good question. Any other questions? What kind of government do they have over there? I'm sorry. What kind of government do they have over there? Um, it's it's a democracy. Um, I really don't know too much about it. I knew they had the last president was a president was a guy from China. I think he was a businessman from China, and so that made him you know uh, more a little more favorable with with China, which is a need, but um, it kind of uh, infuriated some of the Taiwanese that were more natural uh, nationalistic. Uh, in that respect, um, but I really don't know too much uh, about it. Um, I think it's set up pretty similar to ours, though. Can, can they get American TV over there? Yeah, yes, yes. I don't think so, uh, so much. I think they prefer uh, South Korean, <laughs> South Korean uh, television sets, and, and also Japanese from, from Japan. Yes, sir. Is it expensive to live over there? It is not. Very good question. Uh, it's it's quite cheap to live over there. My rent every month is two hundred thirty dollars, uh, which is very very cheap. I mean, where can you live here uh, besides on the street for two hundred thirty dollars? <laughs> and uh, also, uh, like I can buy a box of fried rice about this big, and it could fill me for you know for lunch for hundred uh, for a dollar fifty. They're about this big. Did I say one hundred fifty dollars? <laughs> Sometimes I, I forget to. You do the exchange rate. So if I say a thousand dollars, it seems really high. It's probably only thirty dollars. Is there money buying in the same as ours? Well, they they price it accordingly, but things are a little bit cheaper over there. But also because they make a lot of the things, you know, everything's made in Taiwan. Now it's going to China though more. You'll see things more made in China because China's the cheaper place to do so. But it's it's cheap living, and the cost of a lot of things are a lot lower, which enables us to be there a lot longer. We spend, as shared with Brother Seville before service, we spend a lot more time than a lot of missionaries actually on the field and less time raising funds because it's cheaper to live there than some other countries where it costs more to get there, it costs more to live there, and to have the things you know, that we're able to have, it, it, it takes more money. So we're very thankful for that. We're able to stay on the field more, which is where we want to get back to each time that we're here. We love our country, we love America. Uh, people have some weird ideas when they talk to missionaries. You must hate America because you went to Taiwan. No, I love God and I love those people. That's why I went. So um, yeah, but we were very thankful for the, the cheap living uh, there, so we're able to stay there longer and to to do more. All right. Any other questions? Is that for China then? It is not. It's a sovereign nation. They, China would like to think that they're part of. China, and they say that all the time. They're like, oh, Taiwan is really, Taiwan is really ours. And some Taiwanese feel that way. 
they're just like, oh, we're, I mean, we, we're the same people, we speak the same language, basically, we just write different. In Taiwan, they write traditional Chinese, and in uh, China, they write uh, simplified. Uh, but then there's a lot of Taiwanese, probably 60% or so, they're more nationalistic, and they, you know, they're a soccer nation. They just don't assert that too much, you know, it's like this little ant, you know, same big guy, you know, trying not to, not to offend so much, especially when they're, things are touchy. I don't think they would ever nuke uh, Taiwan because then they can't use it. It's also not too far away. You don't want that after that to go over. They would probably send in troops if they ever did. And someone asked us what we would do in that situation, and I honestly don't know. A lot of times when one nation takes over another nation, they invite you to leave, <laughs> you know, with a boot. <laughs> and they, they'll, you know, they'll kind of kick you out of there and they won't allow you to stay. So we're not sure, but we'll just trust the Lord to, to be with us and keep us. All right, any other questions? Before we get into the Word of God here, I'll be really, really quick, I promise. Like I said, only, only, only 45 minutes or so. All right, turn with me in your Bibles if you would. One man said, turn with me in your Bibles to anywhere you like. <laughs> and I'll be by there directly. <laughs> Praise God. I was at a missions conference and one uh, preacher said, Everybody turned to a different different verse, and he's like, you didn't know that everybody would have a different text here, did you? <laughs> There'd be a text for each individual. Oh, you're probably still wondering where you want me to where, where you want to go. Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. We know this verse of scripture well. I just pray that we follow it well. And I wasn't joking. We will we will be very, uh, pretty brief here tonight. It will be one of my shorter sermons, but I'm used to preaching, you know, about an hour or so. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, and it reads like this: Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And I would say tonight that we need vision, don't we? We need to see clearly for everything that we do. You couldn't drive here tonight without seeing. Clearly, at least I, I hope you can see clearly. You, know, to, you know, go out and check your tires and see what things you brought along with you. A mailbox here. And, praise the Lord. So we need to see clearly. Where there is no burden, there is nothing to say. Where there is no passion, there is no motivation to say it. Where there is no vision, there is no one to say it to and no chance to say it. We're talking about the gospel tonight. Where there is no mission, there is no reason to say it. Let me say that one more time. Where there is no burden, there is nothing to say. Where there is no passion, there is no motivation to say it. When there is no vision, there is no one to say it to and no chance to say it. And when there is no mission, there is no reason or no purpose to say it. I want to talk about these four things tonight. Burden, passion, vision, and mission. And each time I end in one of them, you know I'm one quarter of the way finished with my sermon. I thought that would be nice for you. Number one, burden. Burden means a load, a bulk, even affliction, an unction, like the word of God. You know that we have the unction of God, a word that comes from God, something to say. That weighs heavy on a person. This is, like I said, the word of God, the burden of the Lord. In Isaiah 13, verse 1, it says, The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Naaman, chapter 1, verse 1, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Nahum, Nahum, the Echosite. Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 1, says, the burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see, and then it goes on uh, to talk about that. So the burden, what was this burden that they had? It was the word of God on their shoulders. God had spoken to them, Brother Seville. God had had. had said something to them. There was something that needed to be said now that was said to them. They received the Word of God. And we have that tonight, don't we? We have the burden of the Word of God. We know what it says. And so uh, now it is required of us to say something. So that when we talk about burden. So burden is the knowledge of the state of the world. is the short uh, knowledge of the state of time, the shortness of time, and of the true condition of man without God. And when we just have burden sometimes... 
uh, you know, that it, it seems a lot, doesn't it? With, with no, no vision, not to see clearly how to distribute that, but just adding the burden. But we need these other things as well. We need a burden. So in each one of these situations, Isaiah, Nahum, Habakkuk, they each knew the, the word of the Lord. They understood the situation, and they saw a dreadful end for those who were disobedient to God. That's the first one. Number two, a quarter of the way down with my sermon. Passion. Passion is zeal, it's fire, it's motivation, it's desire, it's an urge, it's inspiration to do something. Usually this goes along with the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit's insistence that we witness. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. We need to testify. Testify how good God is. That's what happened tonight when we sang the song. That was a beautiful song. I think that's the first time I've ever heard it, Brother Spill, that, that song. Talking about God's love and the goodness of God and God's grace. Oh, hallelujah. God is good to us. Yes, he really is. is. And we need to tell others about that. It's yes. simply sometimes how we share our faith. We don't have to go, you know, in the beginning was the word of God and the word, you know. And go through the, the, the Bible. But just sharing the testimony to people. That's God's word. That's God, His word alive in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 20, verse 9 says, Then said I, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more of his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. It was burning in him. It was a passion and zeal. So we need burden tonight. And we're going to pray in these altars in a minute for these things, for burden and for passion. Number three, halfway through with my sermon, vision. Vision is sight. It is foresight. It is insight. To see people, to see their situations, their needs. It is clarity of sight in observation. It's seeing opportunities as well. Not just seeing the true condition. Wow, this person has a need. But also seeing how to meet that need or what you can do. But also seeing that person and that need as an opportunity. Not just as something, well, you know, as we pass by. Something that was brought out in the missions conference down in London, Kentucky. I was able to be there uh, two weeks ago. Praise God. Awesome. Uh, wonderful. I encourage you to go if you ever have the opportunity to go. It stirs my spirit every time I'm there. And it's really, especially if you have any concern with missions, it'll do something great for you. But when we were there, uh, they talked about uh, the, the Good Samaritan. When the Good Samaritan, you know, finally came to help. And they talked about the two men that came past. One of them was a priest and the other one was a Levite. And they're God's people, right? I mean, a priest and a Levite, these are people that minister before God. Maybe they were coming from, or maybe they were going to. If they were coming from, maybe it was more of an obligation they would have had to help this person. Coming from the presence of God, coming before, from ministering unto God, but they didn't want to get themselves dirty. Well, actually, it would have been a week that they would have been unclean if they touched this man who was, who was uh, beaten up and, and bleeding and such. That would have made them ritually unclean. And so we know the price there, but they didn't want to help them. But these were God's people. You know, we have a responsibility, folks, to have vision, to clearly see. And what do they do? They pass by on the other side of the road. They just didn't want to see the situation. So we need vision today. We need yeah. to see clearly the situation. We need to see clearly the opportunities before us. You know, I, I talked to a brother the other day, and I, I said, yes, brother, I'm guilty of the same thing. You know, he passed by someone who needed some help on the side of the road because he was in a hurry to get to church. You ever been that way? We pass by the opportunities because we need to go and get spiritual, right? That was an opportunity to show how spiritual we are, right? And we demonstrated it. And I said, brother, I'm as guilty as you are at times. So we need to see clearly. So burden, passion, and vision. I'm three-fourths of the way done with my sermon. The last one, mission. Mission is purpose. It's drive. It's an assignment. It's a duty. It's an operation that must be done or accomplished. And the mission of God was to love people. And through that love, as we, we, we talked about earlier, uh, He gave, He did something. Praise God, I'm going to tell you tonight, our mission is as easy as two things. Love God and love people. Amen. That's what Jesus said the, 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 the greatest commandments were, to love God and to love people, to know God and to make Him known. That's pretty simple, isn't it? That's making it, not, not oversimplifying, but that's making it very simple. That is our goal tonight, to have burden, passion, vision, and mission. The last verse that I'll read tonight, Romans 9, verse 17, For the Scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that, thou might show, that I might show thee my power, or show my power to thee, or in thee, 
that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. God does what he does in situations and people and in times. And, and he does what he does because he wants to spread his name throughout the earth. And I want that tonight, don't you? Amen. To spread God's name, to, to know him as we said before, and make him known is our desire. Let's all stand here tonight. Yes, God. So I want you to come around these altars if you would. And to pray tonight, in a, in a moment here, if someone wanted to come to the piano, that would be fine. Uh, to pray that God would give us burden, passion, vision, and mission. Burden, passion, vision, mission. Those four things. Let me read what I wrote in, uh, read to you in the first part. No burden, nothing to say. No passion, no motivation to say it. No vision, no one to say it to, and no chance or opportunity to say it. And no mission. No reason to say it. So nothing to say, no motivation to say, no one to say it to, no chance to say it, no reason to say it. But we do have something to say, don't we? We have this gospel. We do have a motivation, something within us. It's shut up in our bones. We've we got to say it. It's, it's driving us. The Spirit of God is inspiring us to do so. And there is people to say it to. And there are chances for us. We're just blind to them many times. And there is a reason to say it. They're, they're a soul in torment. They're a soul dying, going to hell. They're, they're a brother or sister even. They, they just need uplifting. They need encouragement. They need us to help them. So let's go and do these things. Let's all find a place to pray. Let's come to these altars. Pray for burden, passion, vision, and mission.